Hey guys, welcome back to Cozy Faith. I'm Shar. Today in the reading plan, we're actually going to be reading chapter 8 through 10. Each chapter seems to be about average size. So, well, actually 10 is pretty uh, short there. 9 is average. 8 is okay. So, I understood why these were bunched together. <laughs> but before we get into God's holy word, let us pray. Lord God, I love you and I thank you. I thank you for this day. Lord, you're an awesome and holy God. And Lord, you deserve all praise and glory to your name. We thank you for your word. We thank you for fellowship. We thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, I ask that you be with us and lead us today as we read through your word. Help us to humble ourselves and learn directly from you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Did I leave my, I did. I left my, uh, left my, what do you call it? <laughs> Mechanical pencil um, on the shelf over there. So got the faithful number two from Amazon Basics. <laughs> All right, so I am reading from the New Living Translation. This is Deut Deuteronomy 8 through 10. Again, this is the Inspire Faith Bible, which obviously you don't have to have the journaling Bible um, if you want to read along, but I do understand if you want the translation, New Living. Chapter 8. Be careful to obey all the commands I am giving you today. Then you will live and multiply, and you will enter and occupy the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you will obey his command. All right, so got to come back to those two. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone, Brother, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Amen. For all of these 40 years, your clothes didn't wear out and your feet didn't blister or swell. Think about it. Just as a parent disciplines a child, the Lord your God disciplines you for your own good. So obey the commands of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land of flowing streams and pools of water with fountains and springs that gush out in the valleys and hills. It is a land of wheat and barley, of grapevines, fig trees, and pomegranates, of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is, a, is as common as stone and copper is abundant in the hills. When you have eaten your field, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. But that is the time to be careful. Beware that in your plenty, you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commands, regulations, and decrees that I am giving you today. For when you have become full and prosperous and have built fine homes to live in, and when your flocks and herds have become very large and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything else, be careful. Do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Do not forget that he led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its poisonous snakes and scorpions where it was so hot and dry. He gave you water from the rock. He fed you with manna in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and test you for your own good. He did all of this so you would never say to yourself, I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. Remember, the Lord your God, he is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. But I assure you of this, if you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods worshiping and bowing down to them, you will certainly be destroyed. Just as the Lord has destroyed other nations in your path, you also will be destroyed if you refuse to obey the Lord your God. 
All right, so that is chapter eight. And chapter eight, we're just pretty much saying, hey, remember what God has done for you. It was all for your good. Although there was so much complaining about how they left Egypt and how they had food and comfort and shelter there. But in the wilderness and a little before, how they were lacking. But in their lacking of being hunger, God showed himself mighty and fed them. So then they no longer were hungry. When they were thirsty, God provided water. So God supplies all our needs according to his riches and glory. But we just have to be, you know, attentive to, okay, this is the hand of the Lord. Mind you, like the verses said, manna was unknown before this point. But now they can say, hey, we were fed manna, something that our ancestors would know nothing about. And just like each event in um, previous um, Old Testament books where there was the parting of the Red Sea and this, that, and the third. These events didn't happen prior and they haven't happened after because God is unique that way that he did exactly what was needed in that appointed time. And of course, just like us now, modernly, you know, when we get wisdom and understanding on who God is and what he's done for us, we have an appreciation. We humble ourselves. We get rid of pride and we say, you know what? God is God over everything and all things. And he's a good God because he takes care of us. Chapter nine, listen, O Israel, today you're about to cross the Jordan River to take over the land belonging to nations much greater and more powerful than you. They live in cities with walls that reach to the sky. The people are strong and tall. The descendants of the famous Anakite giants. You've heard the saying, who can stand up to the Anakites? But recognize today that the Lord your God is the one who will cross over ahead of you like a devouring fire to destroy them. He will subdue them so that you will quickly conquer them and drive them out, just as the Lord has promised. After the Lord your God has done this for you, don't say in your hearts, the Lord has given us this land because we are such good people. No, it is because of the wickedness of the other nations that he is punishing them out of your way. Oh my, my, can we come back to that? It is not because you are so good or have such integrity that you are about to occupy their land. The Lord your God will drive these nations out ahead of you only because of their wickedness. And to fulfill the, fulfill the oath he swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you must recognize that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land because you are good, for you are not. You are stubborn people. So he had to let them know, like, hey, ain't nothing good about you. You're God's people. And because these individual groups and uh, people and nations were very disrespectful to God, they worshiped their own gods and they denied him. He showed himself mighty saying, okay, I'm going to honor those who obey me and those who follow under me. Um, favor isn't fair, right? Because even right here, uh, he was telling them like, listen, you guys aren't good. You're stubborn. They were, what was the uh, phrase before? Stiff neck. They were not always obedient. They weren't always um, paying attention to God and his words. They weren't always listening. But God said, you know what? These people worship other gods. They don't worship me. Which means, just like today, because you know that being salvation was for the, Gen for the Jews and now it's Jews and Gentiles. What it says to me is that even that concept of, hey, God was not preventing himself from people was still applying then. The free will of choice was still present then. And these people choose to not respect God. They choose to not honor God. They choose not to worship him. Just like today, people have a choice. You can either choose to surrender over to God and live holy, or you can surrender yourself over to all these other idols and false gods. And obviously, not all of that includes just something that was man-made, like a Buddha statue, anything like that. This also includes the idolizing and worshiping of man-made things such as cars, clothing, celebrities, etc. Verse 7. Remember and never forget how angry you made the Lord your God out in the wilderness. From the day you left Egypt unto now, you have been constantly rebelling against him. Even at Mount Sinai, you made the Lord so angry he was ready to destroy you. This happened when I was on the mountain receiving the tablets of stone inscribed with the words of the covenant that the Lord has made with you. 
I was there for 40 days and 40 nights. And all that time, I ate no food and drank no water. So pretty much he was fasting. He was being consecrated. The Lord gave me the two tablets on which God had written with his own finger. All the words he has spoken to you from the heart of the fire when you were assembled at the mountain. At the end of the 40 days and nights, the Lord handed me the two stone tablets inscribed with the words of the covenant. Then the Lord said to me, get up, go down immediately for the people you brought out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. How quickly they have turned away from the way I commanded them to live. They have melted gold and made an idol for themselves. The Lord also said to me, I have seen how stubborn and rebellious these people are. Leave me alone so I may destroy them and erase their name from under heaven. Then I will make a mighty nation of your descendants, a nation larger and more powerful than they are. So while the mountain was blazing with fire, I turned and came down holding my in my hand the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant. There below me, I could see that you had sinned against the Lord, your God. You have melted gold and made a calf idol for yourself. How quickly you have turned away from the path the Lord had commanded you to follow. So I took the stone tablets and threw them to the ground, smashing them before your eyes. Then as before, I threw myself down before the Lord for 40 days and nights. I ate no bread and drank no water because of the great sin you had committed by doing what the Lord hated, provoking him to anger. I feared that the furious anger of the Lord which turned him against you, would drive him to destroy you. But again, he listened to me. The Lord was so angry with Aaron that he wanted to destroy him too. But I prayed for Aaron and the Lord spared him. So we know in the previous um, reading, I mentioned to y'all that there wasn't really too much talk about, you know, Aaron and accountability. Like it was just like these people, right? But we see here that Moses made it clear that he had prayed on behalf of Aaron for God to spare him. I took your sin, the calf you had made, and melted it down in the fire and ground it into fine dust. Then I threw the dust into the stream, to the stream that flows down the mountain. You also made the Lord angry at Tabera, Massa, and Kebroth Hatava. And at Kadesh Barnea, the Lord sent you out with his command, go up and take over the land I have given you. But you rebelled against the command of the Lord, your God, and refused to put your trust in him and obey him. Yes, you have been rebellion against the Lord as long as I have known you. Yikes. So for a very long time, they've been rebellious. That is why I threw myself down before the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. For the Lord said he will destroy you. I prayed to the Lord and said, O sovereign Lord, do not destroy them. They are your own people. They are your special possession whom you redeemed from Egypt by your mighty power and your strong hand. Please overlook the stubbornness and the awful sin of these people and remember instead your servant Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you destroy these people, the Egyptians will say, the Israelites died because the Lord wasn't able to bring them to the land he had promised to give them. Or they might say, he destroyed them because he hated them. He deliberately took them into the wilderness to slaughter them. But they are your people and your special possession, whom you brought out of Egypt by your great strength and powerful arm. Amen. So, like I said in the previous uh, chapter that mentioned this, that He, the people had to be reminded that, hey, you're God's possession. He saved you because of much prayer and fasting. Like I concentrated myself on your behalf. I intercede on your behalf. So we know that time and time again, the intercessor of prayer or interceding is biblical. Well, if you don't know, now you know that you can pray on behalf of somebody else and God will hear your prayer even when they're too caught up in their mess and God has turned from them. And I don't know about y'all, but I had a few people who I had to pray for in that manner that they had and somebody right now where they have completely turned their backs on God. And I still, I don't feel any less uh, pull 
to pray for them than I did before. Like even knowing, cause before they were, from what I gathered, they were trying to live pleasing God or at least confessing with their mouth. But now they have turned away. And I, at first I'm like, okay, Lord, I, I don't, I don't know what to say anymore, but the, the fire and the desire in me to continue to pray for them never went out. And I thank God for that because if it were me, I would want someone to still continually pray for me because obviously I'm in a phase where I'm being foolish and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm being uh, consumed and oppressed by evil and I need someone to intercede on my behalf. So pray about, pray to God about that. God may have assigned people to you. It is a very significant and powerful gift. Um, I would like to believe that all of us are intercessor prayer warriors to a certain extent because even if God never assigned you someone specific. You have your family. You have your spouse. So be praying on behalf of others, especially those who can't pray for themselves. Chapter 10. At that time, the Lord said to me, choose out two stone tablets like the first one. Also make a wooden ark, a sacred chest to store them in. Come up to me on the mountain. And I would write on the tablets the same words that were on the ones you smashed. So he's going to give him the same thing over and over again. Then place the tablets in the ark. So I made an ark of, of acacia wood and cut two stone tablets like the first two. Then I went up to the mountain with the tablets in my hand. Once again, the Lord wrote the Ten Commandments on the tablets and gave them to me. They were the same words the Lord has spoken to you from the heart of the fire on the day you were assembled at the foot of the mountain. So God did not change not one detail of his words and his commands. Then I turned and came down the mountain and placed the tablets in the Ark of the Covenant, which I had made just as the Lord commanded me. And the tablets are still there in the Ark. The people of Israel set out from the wells of the people of Jachin and traveled to Moserah, where Aaron died and was buried. His son, Eliezer, Minister is high priest in his place. Then they journey to Gagoda or Gagoda and from there to Jabatha, a land with many brooks and streams. At that time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and to stand before the Lord as his ministers and to pronounce blessings in his name. These are their duties to the, to this day. That is why the Levites had no share of property or possessions of land among the other Israelite tribes. The Lord himself is their special possession, as the Lord your God told them. As for me, I stayed on the mountain in the Lord's presence for 40 days and nights, as I had done the first time. And once again, the Lord listened to my pleas and agreed not to destroy you. Then the Lord said to me, Get up and resume the journey and lead the people to the land I swore to give to the ancestors so they may take possession of it. So fasting and prayer was key in getting the individuals through the storm or the wilderness and a lot of their disobedient mishaps where they were obviously wrong. But because Moses was uh, pleasing in, in the sight of the Lord, like he was pleased with him and he did what he was supposed to do. He was obedient and he was submissive, um, both physically and spiritually, that God listened to his prayers on behalf of the disobedient people. Verse 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? He requires, requires only that you fear the Lord your God and live in a way that pleases him and love him and serve him with all your heart and soul. And you must always obey the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving to you today for your own good. So what does the Lord require? Fear him, the beginning of wisdom, and to live in a way that is pleasing to him, to live holy. Where am I? Look, the highest heavens and the earth and everything in it all belong to the Lord your God. Let the Lord choose your ancestors as the objects of his love, and he chose you. Their descendants above all other nations as in evident today. Therefore, change your hearts and stop being stubborn. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and Lord of lords. He is the great God, the mighty and awesome God, 
who shows no partiality and cannot be bribed. So going back to what I said previously, that God has no favorite. He cannot be bribed. He shows no partiality. So you can't get away with something that I can't get away with when it comes to his commands. Like we all fall under the same rules. He ensures that orphans and widows receive justice. He shows love to the foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing. So you too must show love to foreigners for you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and worship him and cling to him. Your oaths must be in his name alone. So no other name. He alone is God, the only one who is worthy of your praise, the one who has done these mighty miracles that you have seen with your own eyes. When your ancestors went down into Egypt, there were only 70, only 70 of them. But now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in the sky. Praise God. It showed, like I said, they, they were in the millions at this point from 70 people, y'all. God is amazing. He is God is amazing, excuse me, and he is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. All right, y'all. So that was verses, oh, excuse me, chapter 8 through 10. Comment down below. Tell me what you think, what you got from the reading. Um, please, please, please don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and to share this particular video. I am loving this reading through the Bible, y'all. We're on our way. I done put my little paper down somewhere. I would like to give y'all a heads up on what's next. Let's see. Let's do the guessing game right quick. Let's see. 10, 12. Excuse me. 11, 12. Let me see. Come on. Mm. If I had to guess, I would say 11 through 13 would be the next reading. Like, that doesn't seem too big of a thing. Yeah. But I could be wrong. But, you know, tune in and you'll see what we're really going to read anyway. <laughs> All right, y'all. Love y'all. God bless. Take care. Bye.